Hocam? Yes. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Presentation. Slide mode. Is it okay? Oh, yes, we can see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, have a good day, uh, friends and sir. Uh, as you know, uh, my name is Ege Ilhan, and my department is electrical and computer engineering. Uh, also, I graduated from Antalya Bilim University uh, in 2019. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, digital image uh, processing, uh, image restoration. You can see the my topic. And uh, the presentation consists of uh, five parts uh, as introduction, uh, image restoration, uh, noise models, filters, and uh, MATLAB examples. Uh, in introduction part, uh, I will give information uh, about fundamentals of DIP uh, and answer uh, some questions as you see uh, what's an image what's a digital image what's a digital image processing DIP uh, and uh, uh, there are some uh, stage level of the DIP as low mid and high level processing um, actually uh, the professor gave uh, this information on YouTube channel uh, I'm going to talk briefly uh, other part is uh, image restoration. Uh, there are uh, goals of image restoration techniques. And third part is uh, noise models, uh, as you see. And fourth is filters, as uh, mean filter, order statistic, adaptive, batch reject, batch test, inverse, and geometric mean filter. Uh, also, lastly, I'm going to uh, show some uh, MATLAB function and examples. Uh, These examples, uh, first example is the uh, difference between mean filter and the average filter. And uh, we will uh, consider some noise as uh, salt and pepper and Gaussian noise. Digital uh, image processing. Uh, you can read definition of uh, DIP. Uh, in this point, I took from the Wikipedia. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to talk uh, about the, what is an image. Uh, image is a visual representation of an object, a person, or etc. Uh, by an optical device. This device can be mirror, lens, or a camera. And the other point is what's a digital image. Uh, actual digital image is a representation uh, of a, a two-dimensional image using infinite numbers of points, uh, usually referred as a picture elements or pixels. And uh, as we know, each pixel is uh, represented by one or more numerical values. Uh, for example, for grayscale image, a single value uh, representing uh, the intensity of the pixel at the, between 0 to uh, 255. Uh, but for color image, uh, three values are usually required. But the other point is what is uh, DIP, digital image processing? Actually, uh, there are a lot of uh, definition of this, but in this point, I think the most important uh, things are um, digital computer uh, and the modifying digital image. And we can say uh, DIP uh, can be defined as the ability of uh, modifying digital images with digital computer. And also, uh, there are stage of DIP uh, as low, mid, and high uh, noise removal uh, or the uh, restoration is a low uh, level process. Image uh, restoration. Image restoration is to improve uh, pre-existing image. This process is an objective process, I think, uh, because uh, it may vary uh, from person to person. Uh, sometimes we will uh, blur the image uh, to reduce noise, and also small details can be removed in this point. Uh, in this respect, a filter is very important, and I'm going to explain 
uh, why we use uh, average filter in this photo or we should use uh, mean filter. And there are some uh, very good example of the image restoration, as you see. And noise models. Uh, we can see other uh, noise methods of uh, intensity uh, characteristics with function. Uh, for example, uh, where is the, yes. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, relic noise, uh, there is a, a Z domain and intensity of the Z. If uh, Z smaller than a, a function will be zero, as you see uh, at the, uh, what is the, yes, it's the graph. If uh, Z is uh, smaller than A, uh, the result will be go zero. And if Z acute or bigger than A, uh, the function is work, the function is this, and you can see the uh, real functional graph. And other uh, noise model is and very popular, salt and pepper, and we will use uh, this noise. Uh, and uh, the uh, how can I say also uh, it's called uh, impulse noise for salt and paper noise. Uh, if uh, Z accused to A, uh, the result will be PA. At this point, you can see uh, if uh, Z accused to B, the result will be PB. You can see, and otherwise, other points, uh, the result will be zero. Filtering, uh, actually, uh, spatial filtering is the method of uh, choice in uh, citations when only uh, additive random noise is present. In this point, we can uh, determine uh, mean filters as arithmetic mean uh, filters, geometric mean, harmonic, and contra-harmonic mean filters. Also, order statistic filters uh, as median filters, max, and uh, mean filters. Uh, all the statistic filters as uh, median, max, and mean are useful uh, to reduce noise of image. Actually, median filter has good result to reduce noise. Uh, average mass can be uh, reduce noise, but the best is median, actually. I will show that. Uh, also, other information is, it's very important. Uh, we cannot use uh, um, median uh, filter with Gaussian noise. Uh, we can choose uh, salt and paper noise to implementation in MATLAB uh, because uh, noise uh, more, uh, must produce extreme out there pixel values for medium filter. Uh, salt and paper is uh, suitable for uh, this case, but Gaussian uh, noise is not. And uh, thank you for listening uh, to my presentation. I want to show uh, some example of MATLAB only 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to uh, show Matthew and arithmetic mean filter. Uh, and also, you can write a basic function and see harmonic, uh, contra harmonic, and geometric mean filter on MATLAB. Uh, there are examples on uh, Professor's uh, YouTube channel. And as I say, I want to show the difference uh, between Matthew and uh, average or others uh, called is the arithmetic mean filter. Um, MATLAB. Hocam, can you see my MATLAB screen? Uh, yes, Ilhan, but before you start the MATLAB, mm -hmm. uh, did you provide anything about the filtering in the frequency domain? Actually, no. Uh, I didn't. Uh, the presentation consist, didn't consist of detailed uh, steps or uh, mathematical equation or function, uh, I will uh, add the uh, report. I started. OK. Uh, in the MATLAB program that you want to show us, uh, is it uh, something new more than the code that I explained? Or you want to? OK, show me. Show us. OK, John. Uh, first example is the difference between a uh, median and average filter or why we can uh, uh, implement the uh, Gaussian uh, noise on the median filter as. And uh, as you see, the first step is the I, uh, I read 
the uh, cameraman TIF, it's the photo. And I, I subplotted uh, this result to see step by step clearly. And I2 is the uh, noise image. It's salt and pepper noise. And I use I'm noise uh, function as you see. And uh, again, I subplotted this result. And filter one is the medium filter. And I use medium filter to uh, MATLAB function. Uh, I, I subplotted. Uh, filter two is the uh, average filter. Actually, there are two methods of the uh, quitting uh, average filter or filters. Uh, and the first method is the you can see one over uh, nine uh, times once three by three, and uh, it gives uh, nine elements mat matrix, and the dimension of matrix is three by three, and you can see the uh, value of the filter two. It's approximately one point. 0.1, sorry. And the other uh, method is uh, creating the filter F special function. You can see the average filter and the dimension of matrix is 3 by 3 or 5 by 5. I will go. And it's the filter to result. Uh, I use I filter function. In this point, there are two uh, elements of this function. The first uh, element, I2, and I2 is, as I say, the noise, fi noise picture. And uh, the second element of the function is filter 2. It is the uh, average filter. And again, I subplotted the result. We can run and see the result. Yes. The first one is the original image. There is no any change. And the second one is the noise image. And uh, yes, you can see the salt and pepper noises. And the third one is the after medium uh, after medium filter. Uh, I think the best result is the uh, medium filter. You can see it's uh, uh, way well, it looks like the uh, original image. And the last one is the after average filter. Uh, yes, uh, there are uh, some blurring. And uh, there are some reducing of the noise, salt and pepper noise, but the uh, median filter is the best IT. Um, you can see the difference at this point. And the other example is the average uh, filter, arithmetic mean filter, actually. I used the coins photo uh, and, I, and I subplotted this. And uh, I2 is the uh, Gaussian uh, noise at this point. Actually, uh, I used the I noise function and the, the first uh, elements of this function is the original image. The second one is the noise type. And uh, th lastly, the third one is the uh, variation, as I say, or sorry, variation or standard deviation. Sorry, the last one is the standard deviation. Uh, it can be zero to one. Uh, if we increase the, this value, uh, the brightness of the image will increase. Actually, we can see. It's on the 0 0.02. Yes, you can see it's the original image. It's the uh, calcium noise. You can see if we increase the this value, uh, for example, 0 0.2, we increase uh, 10 times. You can see the brightness of the brightness of the picture will be increased or it can be 0 0.5 and you can see the actually the amount of the noise is increased so mm -hmm. as a side effect uh, since yes. that uh, noise can be appears as a, some bright uh, pixel then the overall brightening of the image is increased yes exactly oh, yeah 0.02 is the best 
uh, to see the difference. And the first filter is the, uh, as I say, uh, I use the F spatial, uh, and uh, you can create uh, other uh, filters with the, this uh, F spatial function. Uh, you only write the dog uh, F spatial. Uh, and I use the average and uh, the second element of the uh, function is the dimension of the uh, filter. First, uh, I used the uh, I created a three by three matrix, and second, the second filter have a five by five dimension. Uh, I want to show the difference uh, between uh, these filters and uh, what is the effect of the uh, size of the uh, filter on filtering process. And result one uh, is the uh, I used iron filter function in this point. And result one is the the first filter result. The result two is uh, represented the second filter. And as I said, I subplotted all of steps. Maybe uh, sorry, we can uh, create a title at this point. The first one is the original image. The second one is the Gaussian noise image. Third one is the mm, average filter of three by three. Maybe you can after three by three average filter. Four is the Five by five. Each filter, yes, that's all. Yes. You can see the difference. It's the original image. There is no any change. And uh, you can see clearly. The second one is the Gaussian noise with the original image. And the third one is the after three by three uh, mask. The last one is the after 5x5 five five mask. Actually, uh, the best result is the 5x5 five 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 mask, but uh, the bullying will be uh, increased. Uh, the bullying will be increased, and some uh, details uh, will uh, removed. Maybe some citations, it can be good, but sometimes it can be bad, actually. Uh, and we can create a 15 by 15 filter to see the other result. Maybe we should change this. Result three. Upload. Yes, we can see clearly. No, it is not correct. Come back to the code. You forgot to change the variable in IM show. Yes. Yes, for job. Yes, exactly. If we increase the uh, the dimension of the uh, average filter, you can see uh, the result will be uh, close to the original image at this point, but the blurring part will be increased and some detail will be removed from the image. So John, that's all actually. Thank you, Elham, for your presentation. Now, let's see your friends. And do they have any question? If you have any question, I can. Yeah. Thanks, Sergey. I don't have a question. Thank you so much, Arturo. Yeah, it would have been best if the MATLAB 
uh, and the in the presentation fonts would have been bigger it was it would be a lot easier to see sorry AJ. Uh, i was saying if the presentation uh, font and mm -hmm. the, the matlab font should have been a lot bigger in order to for us to, to, to see clearly mm -hmm. yes yes okay yeah that's all okay thank you so much okay and uh, let me ask a question uh, in your presentation uh, one of the topic was uh, using the adaptive filtering method mm -hmm. yes you didn't explain it uh, how the adaptive filtering works mm -hmm. Uh, actually, uh, hojam, uh, adaptive filters uh, looks like the uh, other filters. But in this, in the most important point in this point is the uh, naked board uh, size. Actually, it's correct. Uh, if we increase the naked board of the uh, the filter, uh, the adaptive filter uh, will change. Uh, how can I say badly? Uh, for example, if we increase the size of the uh, filter or matrix for uh, arithmetic mean filter, the blurring part will be increased. For adaptive filters, uh, it's not uh, correct for this uh, point. If you increase the size of the matrix, uh, the blurring part is not removed. Maybe some uh, points or some example, uh, the best result will be represent the adaptive filter we can use easily. And uh, Actually, I know the uh, for uh, image uh, segmentation, adaptive filter uh, can be used. So, in general, adaptive filter is better than the, for example, mean filter and order statistic filters, or not? It is the best, I think, yeah. for order statistic filters. So it was better to show us how we can implement adaptive filter in MATLAB instead of uh, the previous um, codes that are very similar to the codes that I explained. Anyway, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you so much, Rajam. Uh, I will uh, detail uh, uh, information. I will give detailed information about the adaptive filter or the other uh, filtering. It's not spatial. Uh, with details and uh, mathematical equations. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Rajam. So you can uh, stop sharing your screen. Okay. So the next one, who want to uh, start? Professor, I will. Let me give you, uh, Sadek, are you ready for presenting? Yeah, sure, Professor, yes. Okay, let me change your role. So now you can share your screen and start your presentation. Yes. <clears throat> Hi everyone, uh, good morning. Today I'm going to present the uh, presentation title image segmentation and the course is digital image processing. I'm Sadiq Iqbal and professor is Shaharam Tahiri. So the contents of the presentation are going to be like this. First of all, I'm going to explain the uh, what is segmentation and uh, uh, give uh, examples related to segmentation. And then I'm going to talk about the techniques that are, are included in the segmentation. Image segmentation, first of all, is going to be edge detection. After that, isolated point detection and line detection and region based segmentation and split and merge. Uh, after that, uh, we'll see uh, two types of uh, algorithms used in segmentation and then uh, examples related to segmentation and in the finals, uh, the conclusion. OK, so first of all, uh, what is uh, image segmentation? Uh, from the previous presentation given by Egil Han, we know what is an image and a digital image and uh, digital image processing. So uh, segmentation, image segmentation is a process related to digital image processing. So the main purpose of uh, this image segmentation is to partition an image into meaningful regions. For, uh, from this example, we can see that uh, an image uh, is uh, the image containing a dog 
and they are partitioned uh, related to meaningful regions. For example, in the, on the right of the image, a cat and a dog. Uh, just uh, to uh, explain the what is the image segmentation uh, in or in terms of partitioning. And uh, with respect to a particular application, for example, in this example, uh, the application is uh, object detection. In terms of there are two objects, cat and a dog. The segmentation is uh, uh, based on measurements taken from the image. This is the image, uh, image localization, and uh, the containing a dog. So uh, uh, taken uh, the uh, uh, values can be gray level, color, or uh, text depth, uh, depth or motion. Uh, we'll see in the coming slides the these are uh, all the values. And the segmentation is a, refers to a process of partitioning a digital image in, uh, image into multiple sets uh, regions or sets of pixels. Uh, we will also see in the coming slides uh, what is the partitioning of a digital image uh, actually looks like into multiple regions. And image detect, uh, image segmentation is typically used to locate objects and uh, uh, boundaries in uh, images. And uh, we will also see examples related to uh, all locate objects and boundaries uh, along the, in the coming slides. Usually image segmentation uh, pixels in a region are similar with respect to some characteristics or computer property such as color intensity or uh, texture. So uh, when a partitioning, uh, when a segmenting uh, Im image in a region, uh, the characteristic, the pixels are segmented in uh, with respect to some characteristics. And the applications of image segmentation include identifying objects in a scene. From this example, we can see that uh, uh, the object uh, is uh, identification of object, for example, uh, dog, because uh, uh, if the uh, first we train the uh, set uh, regarding the object detection, which is uh, and the input example is the given is dog, and uh, the <laughs> object detection uh, output is related to in terms of uh, dog uh, out of the cat and dog combined image. And identifying objects in moving scenes. We can uh, also use image segmentation in identifying the objects uh, uh, in uh, uh, moving scenes. Some, uh, for example, let's say in traffic uh, uh, traffic light camera, sorry, uh, traffic cameras. The cameras used at the at the roads to identify moving uh, cars, for example, uh, and identifying objects which are at different distances. And uh, this can also be impl implement, uh, implemented in uh, roads as well in identifying the objects. Uh, for example, people uh, that are different objects, uh, distances, and uh, their moving objects, uh, uh, cars, there are, and there are also other objects, uh, for example, traffic signals, stopping uh, signal, traffic lights, and uh, other uh, things that are as well. The, and the uh, lines on the road, that can also be uh, used uh, as an example in terms of detecting uh, objects. <coughs> Uh, image segmentation, uh, as uh, I already told you, uh, talked about it, uh, this uh, divides an image into its uh, constituent parts. So uh, we have an example of Pepper's image. And according to the uh, similar pixels, the image is divided into uh, its constituent parts. For example, uh, for this Pepper, uh, long type of Pepper, the image is divided into this uh, subregion. And uh, for this uh, paper, uh, the image is divided into this, and it depends on the shape and the boundary and uh, the levels of subdivision depend on the problem being solved. And uh, uh, this also depends on how, what type of problem uh, there is, uh, uh, for example, uh, in terms of discontinuity or similarity. Uh, here they both, I think both are included in terms of discontinuity. We have uh, here the, uh, the levels are different for pixel levels. And uh, we can actually see the edges, the boundary or discontinuity. And uh, also we are uh, using the similar similarity here as well from this. Uh, the green bird is actually not green. It's different. Uh, sorry, uh, it's the same as that. That is why it's uh, it uh, uh, during the segmentation. It's divided, subdivided into the uh, due to the same similarity. OK, so the segmentation techniques first uh, is the edge detection. In edge detection, images significantly reduces the amount of data and fills out the useless information. 
while preserving the important structural uh, properties of an image. So uh, as the name implies uh, edge detection, we are, let's take this example, uh, the edges, for example, for this long paper, the it the edges the this continues the boundaries uh, they uh, uh, show the edges of the paper. So if we only we are only focused on uh, this uh, particular uh, paper, the rest of the uh, image is uh, includes useless information for us. So in edge detection, we are only uh, uh, we will only focus on this paper and we detect this and after the and the all the useless information is. Uh, is not uh, uh, for is not useful, so it's removed. And it uh, detects discontinuities of the gray level. And from this example, we can see that uh, uh, the edge detection and uh, discontinuities. And from this example, we can see the discontinuities. Detection of the edge boundary between two regions. These are, for uh, uh, if we consider the, these two papers, two different regions, and we have, we can see the discontinuity and the edge boundaries. And uh, uh, this, uh, if by using these two uh, uh, properties, we can successfully uh, uh, detect the edges. <coughs> the other technique is the isolated point detection. Uh, only those points which are large enough to be considered are only selected and considered and find out the value for it. So uh, in this image, we can see three objects. Uh, just let, let's not talk about that. One, two, and three. Uh, these three objects uh, contain large enough points to be considered for selection. And the, the and in the background, the black and the uh, a little gray. The points are not that uh, large enough. So this is why the and the, the their shadows as well. So we consider and find uh, the uh, values of these uh, three objects in uh, isolated point detection because we isolate the uh, their points, the uh, the object and its shadow. We are isolating them from the rest of the image for the for three uh, objects. So in this way, we uh, select the appropriate and consider them to find out their values. And the values depend on application and the use <coughs> of the image segmentation where it's uh, applied. A line detection. So uh, line detection includes a wide variety of mathematical ma methods that aim at identifying points in our digital image at which the image brightness changes sharply or uh, more firmly has discontinuities. So from this example, we can see uh, that uh, on the road we uh, we have lines on the right and the left side of the road and in the middle. So in order to detect this, and the motion, uh, the picture is also in motion, and uh, it is it's uh, very it's good to be uh, it's good to note that it's this is not a static. It's very easy to locate a uh, line line and a uh, point and edges in, on a static in, uh, image, but in a uh, moving in a, in a dynamic image, uh, this becomes uh, difficult. Because the, uh, the the point the image uh, changes, the pixel values uh, change and the intensity changes as well. So the points and image at which image brightness changes sharply are typically organized into a set of curved line segments termed edges. So uh, from the definition and from the example, we can actually see the, the line detection, the uh, relating to the red. And it's and uh, as the camera movie and the, as the car movies from, uh, moves from the in the image, the lines move move as well, and the detected the red lines also uh, move along with that. <coughs> and uh, the the region based segmentation is also a technique of this uh, image segmentation. Its main goal is to partition an image into regions. From this uh, particular example, we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, seven uh, regions and uh, uh, a little bit different uh, small regions. One, two, three, four. So uh, the main goal here in, in this particular uh, region based segmentation is to divide an image into uh, uh, smaller regions. And region based segmentation is the technique that allows us to determine the region directly. And the region has contains uh, uh, pixels or values that are uh, that are similar. Uh, the the other uh, 
technique related to region is the region growing pig group in this particular uh, technique we group the pixels uh, or into sub regions that uh, or into a larger regions uh, when the homogeneity criterion is satisfied in this example the homogeneity uh, criterion is the uh, pixels that have the similar values uh, in terms of intensity it can be gray level it can be color and texture or depth but here the the colors is related to color and the intensity for example brown green and the gray and the red there are four regions uh, based on the uh, color so region grows around the seed point we select a random point from the for example let's start with the brown uh, and all of the these points we select a single random point and after that the region grows around that according to the similarity properties similar properties <clears throat> and uh, this is region growing and the other technique is the region splitting uh, rule to be followed strictly so that we can split the regions accordingly uh, region growing starts from a set of seed points and uh, the same as in the growing but uh, in terms of increasing the number of points we split them uh, in the region splitting uh, technique and alternative is to start with the whole image for example if we consider uh, the this square as a whole image we uh, as a single region we subdivide the region and that do not uh, satisfy our continue condition of homogeneity and uh, we can also see the quad tree of sub regions because according to the homogeneity condition the regions are subdivided or uh, subdivided or split and uh, opposite to splitting is merging region merging is the opposite of region splitting uh, how because in region splitting we uh, split the regions but uh, in region merging we actually merge the uh, different uh, regions starting with small region for example 2 by 2 uh, or 4 by 4 region and merge the regions that have similar characteristics uh, 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 it's important to note here in uh, in region we uh, mostly uh, we take the values that are similar characteristics uh, have similar characteristics and uh, the it can be gray level and uh, color intensity uh, etc so splitting and uh, uh, merging actually is related to similar characteristics because uh, that's how uh, is very helpful and it's easier to, to do that and in say segmentation of algorithms segmentation of algorithms are based on one of the basic properties of gray level uh, values first is the discontinuity that means partition in abrupt discontinuity from this example uh, we can see actually the discontinuity here uh, uh, in terms of the edge and the object uh, for example, uh, the uh, shadow is the dark and of the and the object is uh, uh, gray and uh, white. So the edge of the object is the discontinuity because after that the intensity values change and the gray levels change. The uh, we have uh, black uh, in this area. The whole uh, in a gray the color level is dark. So and the intensity and the pixel level, uh, sorry, the intensity levels are also changed. So uh, this is a type of discontinuity. And uh, detection of isolated points and detection of lines that is in an image. So discontinuity consists of these three uh, uh, well, uh, these three main points. Similarity detects detects similar regions. Discontinuity plus similarity is equal to gray level pixel values, static and dynamic. So in similarity, here in this region growing, we uh, sorry, uh, yeah, in this region-based segmentation for uh, sim discontinuity and uh, similarity, uh, discontinuity, as I explained, that uh, the uh, due to uh, values, uh, similar values change due to intensity levels uh, change, we uh, see we actually see discontinuity. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, four. Uh, in these four regions, smaller four regions, for example, the intensity values change, the, the gray levels change, and the colors change. So we have one, two, three, four different subregions, and uh, in the, between these subregions, we have discontinuities. And uh, the uh, all of these four subregions, e each of the subregion has similar uh, similarity, uh, has uh, uh, values because the group is. Uh, uh, partition into uh, different val uh, values, different pixels are grouped together. 
So that is a related to uh, similarity. And implementation of image segmentation in fruit disease detection. For example, uh, in terms of uh, object detection uh, here, we uh, will we are considering a uh, image segmentation in fruit disease detection. We, uh, we will train the uh, we train the for example, let's say uh, <clears throat> a set related to uh, in detecting the uh, uh, detecting the disease uh, fruit disease in uh, by using image segmentation. And uh, we give the give the, these two uh, images. And uh, after, uh, before future, yeah. Then important point here is to uh, remember is that image segmentation is a pre-level uh, processing. That means it is uh, processed before it is applied before future extraction. Because uh, if uh, if the whole image uh, is uh, uh, is used, it, that is not uh, efficient and it's uh, uh, it's time consuming as well because uh, the uh, uh, in the whole image, there uh, there uh, are many regions uh, which are uh, not uh, desired, which are not meaningful, with that are, that have no information. So image segmentation is applied uh, uh, before future extraction and before even uh, uh, using uh, filtering. Uh, so that is, uh, and in this way, we can also reduce the size of the image, uh, and uh, uh, we only extract information, and we only focus. On the information that is uh, that is related to the task given at hand. So, conclusion uh, is that image segmentation is useful to detect the details of the image, as I previously explained, and it is used to find points of the image which are important and uh, delete the unnecessary data. Uh, this can be uh, uh, these three points are uh, very helpful, and uh, at, at some time these can be very uh, uh, critical in order to implement them for example uh, in uh, in health conditions in uh, in, me in medical uh, field this can be uh, uh, very important to uh, do not mess up uh, in uh, this in examining a patient and in uh, accurately finding out the details related in, in our image so thank you this was all for me Okay, thank you, Sadeq. Now, if you have any question, you can ask it from Sadeq. Yeah, Sadeq, thank you. Uh, if it is not a problem for you, uh, can you share the presentation? Because uh, it was a good uh, information in this slide. Uh, yeah. We want yes. to uh, work on it. Uh, yeah, sure. If the professor allows me, I can do that. Yeah. Yes, uh, of course, uh, both of the presentation slides and the report will be shared with all of the members of the class. Also, I will put this uh, video on the YouTube channel, your presentations. Okay, okay. so well, if you yeah. don't have any question, we can uh, move to yeah. the next person. I can I make a question. This, uh, wait, Ilhan, do you have any question? Yes, Raja. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to say uh, your topic is so popular today, uh, Sadiq. Uh, mm. As you know, uh, automotive industry uh, use this technology today. Uh, mm. For example, uh, Tesla company uh, has uh, automation driving plant, autopilot, or and other companies use uh, life following detection function of this technology. Uh, but uh, accident uh, can be occurred. Uh, even if an uh, object is detected, uh, wages not responding uh, of this case, of this uh, citation. Uh, what is the reason of this point? Uh, is it because of the algorithm or uh, environmental condition? Do you have any uh, idea about that? Actually, uh, Agi, th this is a very good observation because uh, it depends on the conditions. Mm. It, it's not necessarily 100% uh, because we are processing in digital environment, but uh, what we are processing is the real world information. So uh, it's not uh, uh, 100 percent, but but we can be uh, get very close to the, what you're trying to say because the the searchers the search is going on and the searchers have actually 
you know, uh, come very close to uh, in designing proficient algorithms. But uh, what I, what I uh, explained in the presentation, they are not uh, uh, state of the art uh, uh, techniques because there are other state of the art techniques that uh, actually uh, reduce the uh, chances of uh, accidents occurring. I think Professor uh, may agree to this as well. Uh, actually, that type of the accident may be caused by several uh, factors. Maybe we have a problem with the segmentation, but this type of system consists of several components and uh, both of the software and hardware problems can be uh, occurred in a special situation and cause an accident. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a noise in the sensor and uh, therefore the detected uh, region or uh, the segmentation is not correctly performed. Maybe after uh, finding the correct uh, segmentation, the other part of the system does not work correctly. It is not uh, easy to find out uh, what is the source. And it, it is not happening uh, every time. It is only happened one in million and one in trillion. So uh, finding the and debugging this type of projects it's a very time consuming process. Therefore, uh, we cannot say that, uh, for example, the uh, segmentation algorithm uh, is the source of this problem. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Ajay. I got it. Thank you, Sadiq. Thank you, okay, Sadiq, you can stop sharing your screen. Let's move to the. So I want to. Yeah, I can it. start, sir. Okay, Chilik, let me um, Okay, you can share your rescue now. Frequency domain filtering. Okay, this is the part that Ilhan ignored, so you cover it. It's okay. Whenever you are ready, you can start. Are you talking? Because I cannot hear you. Yes, we cannot hear you. I think the mic is closed for Chalik. Your microphone is mute, maybe. Yes. Yes. Ah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> ah, sorry for this. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, I will talk about the frequency domain filtering. Uh, firstly, uh, what will we learn today? Which mathematical tools are used to represent an image contents in the 2D frequency domain? What is the Fourier transform? What are the, its main properties? And how it, is it used to, in the context of frequency domain filtering? How are image processing filters designed and implemented in the frequency domain? What are the differences between low-pass and high-pass filters? What are the differences Butterworth and Gaussian filters? Uh, what is the frequency domain filters? Uh, firstly, I want to talk about on it. Frequency domain filters are used to, uh, for smoothing and sharpening of image by removal of high or low frequency components. Sometimes it is possible of removal of very high and very low frequency. Frequency domain filters are different from special domain filter, as it basically focuses on the frequency of the images. Uh, it is basically done for two basic operations, uh, generally smoothing or sharpening. Uh, there are three types of frequency domain filters, low-pass filters, high-pass filters, and uh, band-pass filters. Uh, firstly, what is low-pass filter? Low-pass filter removes the high-frequency components. Uh, it means it keeps low-frequency components. It is used for smoothing the image. 
uh, it is used to smoothen any the image by attenuating uh, high frequency component and preserving low frequency component. Uh, as we know the uh, formulas in the university uh, third and fourth class, uh, there are uh, formulas. Uh, what is the high pass filter? High pass filter removes the low frequency components. Uh, that means it keeps high frequency components. Uh, it is used for sharpening the image. Uh, it is used to sharpen the image by attenuating low frequency components and preserving the high frequency components. Uh, its formula again, as you see, uh, sorry. it is a uh, band pass filter. Uh, band pass filter removes the uh, very low frequency and very high frequency components. Uh, that means it keeps the moderate range band of frequencies. Uh, band mass filtering is used to change edge while reducing the noise at the same time. Uh, how frequency dominant filters work? Uh, the input image uh, is transformed to the 2D frequency domain, representation using the 2D Fourier transform. Uh, after that, a filter of specific type uh, ideal Butterworth Gaison, which we will talk about, and uh, behavior uh, filters is specified and applied to frequency domain representation of an image. Uh, after that, the resulting values are transformed back to the 2D spatial domain by applying the inverse 2D Fourier transform, producing an output, yani uh, filtered image. Uh, there was a uh, response function uh, in frequency domain. Uh, in the first image, uh, which is a low pass filter equivalent to 3 by 3 average filter in this spatial domain, and the uh, picture of B, high pass filter equivalent to 3 by 3 composite Laplacian sharpening filter in this spatial domain. Uh, there is an example for uh, it. Uh, yeah, firstly, huh. the the two D F T and it is inverse or implemented in MATLAB by functions F F T two uh, in U C there uh, and I F F T two uh, respectively. Two D F T results are usually shifted for visualization purposes in such a ways as the position the zero frequency component at the center of the figure. Uh, this can be exactly accomplished by a function FFT sheet. Uh, MATLAB also includes function IFFT shift. Uh, there is a, uh, you can see the uh, original image unnamed uh, in the code. Uh, after that Fourier spectrum of an, an image in A. Uh, for a can see domain filtering. Uh, first, the image shows where is the, uh, image shows an image and it is frequency spectrum. The transformed version of the image clearly bears no resemblance to the original version. Moreover, it does not provide any obvious visual hints as to what the original image contents were. Uh, as we talk, uh, this is frequency domain filtering uh, and. Uh, I will talk about the low pass causing filtering in the frequency domain. Uh, so just to, uh, all frequency filters can be implemented in this partial domain. And if there is exist a simple kernel for the desired filter. Uh, hence we do filtering in the frequency domain. Frequency filtering is more appropriate, uh, is no straightforward kernel. Uh, can be found in this partial domain and may also more efficient. Uh, so, what we generally do, uh, like we have been doing in the past, we take an image in the Fourier domain, apply the filtering function to it, and we multiply pixel by pixel at, to get the transformed filtered image. Uh, we will, uh, I will show the example on MATLAB. Uh, we talk about the fil uh, filters, low pass, high pass, bent pass. Uh, Gaussian, fil Gaussian filtering. 
Uh, what is the Gaussian filtering? Uh, better result can be achieved with Gaussian shaped filter function. Uh, the advantage is that the Gaussian has the same shape in the spatial and Fourier domains and therefore does not incur the ringing effect in the spatial domain of the filtered image. A commonly used discrete approximation to the Gaussian in the Butterworth filter. Applying this filter is the uh, Fourier domain shows a similar result to the Gaussian smoothing in the spatial domain. Uh, one difference is that the uh, computational cost of the spatial filter increases with the standard deviation, whereas the cost for frequency filter are the independent of the filter function. Hence, the spatial Gaussian filter is more appropriate for narrow low phase filter, while the Butterworth filter is better implementation for wide full low phase filter. The same principles apply to high phase filters. Uh, we obtain a high phase filter function by inverting the corresponding to low phase filter. Uh, there is an example uh, for Gaussian filter. Uh, now we realize it is using MATLAB. So like before, uh, I will read my camera man, the, that TIFF uh, image, as you know, uh, example. Uh, this uh, this picture uh, 256 by 206, say, 256 uh, pixels. Uh, so we'll create a special filter for guys using the F special. Uh, so we will say uh, casual. I will take it is uh, 256 because this is square image. So this is the size of the filter and let make let's take the standard deviation as 10 list of of a nested. Um, now the figure is uh, you can see uh, very small here in the figure one. We need to scale it so that the center value is one. Uh, so what? So for that, uh, I just have a inbuilt function made to gray. If I apply it in it on this G. I can again check the vec value for G1, and you can see the value is now 1. Uh, so I can use this filter so on the Fourier transform of a like before. Uh, I just need to know get the value with dot multiplier. So this is element by element multiplication of the Fourier transformed image with my filter. Uh, I can see a filter that I have created using the FFT shows function. Uh, which we had created earlier. Uh, so that is my filter like, like before. Yeah. Sorry. And now you can see in the figure uh, to final my result, uh, the cameraman tiff. Uh, you can see that this is smoothed kind of image, uh, but is more of a blurred image. Uh, so since my say a standard deviation was then I just increase it. Uh, I will have a bigger bell shaped form function now. Uh, I change uh, maybe G to. Uh, you can see there. Uh, yeah. To uh, 30 again. The same transformation. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, again, as uh, some transformation G1 is the this again perform its operation inverse and uh, we will see the result. Uh, you can see the figure each, figure three. This is how my uh, image looks like and it is kind of smoothed out. Uh, we can uh, just play around with the values of the standard deviation and uh, we can see the uh, result. Uh, high pass filter. Uh, in this slide, I, I will talk about the high pass uh, filtering in the Fourier transform domain. Uh, I wrote code in MATLAB uh, for high pass Fourier transform. Uh, firstly, I created a mesh grid. Uh, I take uh, the size uh, 128 to 127 uh, minus 1, uh, 128 to 127, because our image size, if we are talking about, is 256. I will create a circle now this time. Uh, I will say uh, you can see uh, in the uh, figure one. Uh, I will say the C is equal to Z greater than 15. Uh, 
Uh, so now uh, to perform the high pass filtering in the frequency domain, we keep the center values of the DFT and emulate the others. Uh, I will read a cameraman image again. Uh, perform the Fourier transformation on that image and perform the high pass filtering. Uh, we can use the FFT show function which we had made to see. Uh, this value so you can see Z, Z is greater than 15 here. Uh, in you can see in the figure one, uh, figure two, sorry. Uh, so this is how my outputs look like. Uh, I can see change to my increasing the radius, so I can say for C is greater than maybe uh, 50. Uh, in the figure three, you can see, uh, and uh, we used now again perform the inverse Fourier transform. And uh, we can see the result of figure four. Uh, now, what is the difference between? Uh, now we can see the differences. Yeah, the differences is a radius increased, the whiteness around the picture decreased. Here we applied the high pass filter and compared the result. Uh, in figure four is more dark, uh, and figure two is more brighter, as we can see. Uh, what is Gaussian noise uh, in the one dimension Gaussian noise? In this slide, I will talk about the Gaussian noise. The Gaussian noise is a bell shaped noise. The value of sigma, which is standard deviation, determines the shape of the noise, the smaller the value of the sigma, the more smaller the standard deviation. So we have an inbuilt function called the F special, wherein with, if you give the Gaussian parameter, uh, and we specify uh, which is the dimension of the Gaussian noise. Uh, and as is the standard deviation, which is uh, sigma over here, then we need to create filters. Uh, in the first figure, large value of sigma, and second value, uh, small value of sigma, you can see. Uh, again, uh, in there, I will use the MATLAB function. Uh, I will use. I will start off by reading the image uh, again. A cameraman image. I am read cameraman in MATLAB now. I will add the noise to it. I will add Gaussian noise and specify the variance. Uh, variance is basically equal to sigma square, wherein sigma is the standard deviation. Uh, so I have specified the variance as 0.1 to 1.01. So sigma would be 0.1. I want to see. I want to see the figure of cameraman uh, as we use figure one, as you can see. Uh, now uh, the second second figure is one corrupted with the Gaussian noise. Uh, now we can start the creating filters. Let's try to create. Oh, I specified the standard deviation sigma three uh, in there. Yeah, in there. Uh, since these are supplementary loops, we will not get into the details of these values. Uh, okay, we can see. Uh, now, uh, so we found out the convolution, so I say gone to take original image, uh, figure and figure four. Uh, figure four is uh, more blurred than figure one. Uh, my low pass filter to the does so goes in nice since uh, it is low filter. It's a blurred image. Uh, now we can try to the same thing on a noise at image. Yeah, yes, I can. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, in figure, yo, I will perform. So this is me name it the out one. Uh, in figure five, so you can see this is kind of the lost values. So it is not a good idea to use good Gaussian filter to remove the Gaussian noise. Instead, we need to use the white the filter. Uh, I can just say maybe W is equal to Y. Uh, that is an input common to use uh, the white filter and comma and the size of uh, the filter. Uh, 
Okay, I want to say five, five. Let's uh, you can see uh, the figure six. This is getting better. The so final filter is definitely better to remove the Gaussian noise. Uh, we can uh, also plot the surface of the Gaussian filter. Uh, we have created using the soft command, as you can uh, at the bottom of the code. Okay, uh, we have used the Gaussian filter in image. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Butterworth high pass filter. In the field of image processing, Butterworth high pass filter is used to, for image sharpening in the frequency domain. Image sharpening uh, is a technique to enhance the fine details and highlight the edges in the digital image. It removes low frequency components from an image and reserves high frequency components. Uh, what is the approach of water uh, word filters? Uh, step one is input uh, read and image. Step two, saving the size of the input image in pixels. Step three, get the Fourier transform of the input image. Step four, assign the order and uh, and cut off frequency. Step five, designing filter water word type as filter. Step six, convolution between the Fourier transform input image and the filtering mask. Step 7, take inverse Fourier transform of the convoluted image. And step A is display the resultant image as an output uh, as we make this is, uh, before MATLAB codes. Uh, now uh, I want to uh, high pass fil butterworth filtering in the frequency domain in MATLAB. Uh, firstly, I will make a function which name is butterhp in the function in MATLAB. The input variable are um, im is image, uh, where, sorry, im is there, uh, d is cutoff frequency, and n is order, uh, hash and y uh, size of image, equal size of image. Uh, xy function is we can use every image, uh, this is formulas. Uh, it is find automatically size of image. Uh, after that, when I create the function, uh, I will go to the command window of the MATLAB, MATLAB uh, and use the FFT shift function. Now applying the filtering, uh, AFHP is applying filter uh, in there. Uh, after that, uh, you can see the figure two is applying filtering, uh, and after that, making the transform of image. Uh, figure three is a transform of image. Uh, we can see. Uh, now I change the second parameter fifty to two again. Uh, there was a when I changed. Uh, I repeat the same steps again, and the result is the last image uh, come more blurred. In figure five, you can see there. Uh, low pass filter. Uh, low causing filtering in the frequency domain. Uh, so just to uh, recirculate all frequency filter can be implemented in this partial domain. And if there exists a simple kernel for the desired filter effect, it is competitively less expensive to perform the filtering in this partial domain. Uh, I write code in a, a again, uh, which I find the, uh, in internet. Uh, when I apply this code, uh, we can see the original image there and uh, low pass filtered image. Uh, there is a uh, low pass filtered max uh, subplot to, to, to three, and uh, there is a uh, left in the there. And mask uh, after FF sheet operation is there the figure uh, four. And that is this. Thank you, my friends. Hello. Thank you, Chalik, for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Thanks. So, guys, do you have any question from Chalik? Thank you, actually. I don't have any question. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, it was very well defined and organized presentation. Thank you. So the last presentation will be from Zulfaqar. Let me give him the permission. Okay. Mamad, now you can share your screen. Okay. So my voice is clear. Uh, let's see. Chalik, did you stop sharing your screen? Okay. Now, Zolfagar, we can see your screen, I think. You can see my screen? Not yet, actually. Not yet. Okay, now we can see it. Okay. Give me one second. <clears throat> so, hi, how are you? Uh, hi, Professor. My name is Mohammed Zunair. So, today's my topic is color image processing. In this topic, we have to cover different models and uh, uh, explain what is it. So, let's start about this. First of all, we have uh, color perception and representation, uh, in which we have three types. Uh, we can say that human perception of color, trichromatic color, mixing theory, and different color representations by using different color models, and also by using the convergence from different models to different models. Color image display, we have two things uh, in which we have true color image, and second, we have indexed color image. And the last one for the human eye, we use the pseudo color imaging and enhancements. So let's start for this. First, we have the human perception of color. In this, we have retina. So in the retina, we contain cones and roads. So the cones may have the day vision, which can uh, perceive the color tune. And also we have the three, red, green, blue, and uh, are, these are the cones. So these are the color of the cones. So the roads we have uh, for the night visions, to see the object very clearly, perceive the brightnesses only. And the second, we have the color sensations uh, in which we have two types, uh, the luminance, which we can say that brightness and the chrominance, which we can have two types, we can say for the hue and the saturation. And this is the responses of cones. Uh, normally we have 400 to 700 nanometers. So uh, as as the, as the graph shows that there is a plotting uh, by different uh, uh, values for the uh, nanometers uh, by using the color scheme for blue, green, and red. And this is the absor absorption of light by the red, green, and blue cones in human eye as a function of wavelength as the formula is shown in here. Uh, I is represented for the red, green, blue, and yellow color, and it will be represented by this formula. So uh, we can calculate uh, the frequency responses of cones by using this formula. Uh, second one is illuminating and reflecting light. For emulating uh, sources, we have emit light. For example, the sun, light bulb, TV, and the monitors are used uh, to emit the lights and perceiving color depend upon the frequency that is emitted from the objects. And uh, second, we have reflecting sources. So reflect an incoming light means, for example, the color matter surfaces, clothes, uh, what we predict from an object, it is our reflecting sources. So for perceived color depends upon the frequencies that is uh, emitted or absorbed by different objects, uh, the different frequencies. So, uh, we have trichromatic color mixing. In trichromatic color mixing theory, any color can be obtained by mixing three primary colors with the right proportions. As you know, we have three uh, primary colors, red, green, and blue. So the color meter works by exciting red, green, blue, phosphorus using the uh, separate, uh, you have, they have different separate electronic guns. So for addition of values, if we have uh, red plus green plus blue, if we have uh, no value, uh, I mean to say that if we have zero value for red, zero value for green, and zero for blue, so it means we have a black color. But if we have some value added in the amount of the coordinates of red, green, and blue, then it will give us a white uh, a white color. So the primary color for reflecting, reflecting sources, also known as the secondary colors, uh, as we know about the CMY model, uh, it represents as cyan, magenta, and yellow. Uh, color print printers work by using this CMY model, and if we added the black dyes in it, it means we have the CMYK model. Follow subjective rules by uh, R plus G plus B is equal to the black color. If we have no value added in, in the functionalities or the values coordinates of these colors. So first of all, we have this uh, the comparison between the uh, red, green, blue model versus uh, uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. 
so here we have two images. We can say that uh, in this uh, red RGB, we have if uh, if we want to uh, form the uh, color magenta, so we have to add the red plus blue color. So we will found a new color by adding some values of red and uh, some values of blue. We will have to get this uh, color magenta. And for the cyan, if we add the blue and green color by adding some values of coordinates for blue and some for green, we will have to form the color cyan. And for the yellow color, we will have to add uh, the green and red color, some amounts. So we will have a new color and we will get the yellow. Uh, in our uh, CMY, we have magenta by white minus. If we, we will subtract some value of uh, green from white, then we will get the color from magenta. So if we have uh, some value from white subtracting from the red, so we have the color cyan. As same as the procedure following, uh, if we subtract some value of blue from the value of white, we will get uh, the yellow color. It is uh, true to the CMY model. So uh, the first one, the, the first image is our color image. So if uh, these are the other three plots, it means uh, red, green, and blue. So at the moment, the values are uh, zero, zero, zero. Uh, we didn't get any, add any value in the uh, process uh, of uh, uh, achieving this image. This is our testimonials value. Uh, so according to this, the amount of red and green blue needed to form any particular uh, color. It means if we add any color, uh, any uh, value to the color. So it means we are getting some number. These are our estimated values that we have denoted by X, Y, and Z. So we have the three coefficients, X, Y, and Z. Uh, these are the formula to find these values. X is equal to X over X plus Y plus Z for Y and for Z as the same procedure. Only true chromatic coefficients are necessary to specify uh, X plus Y plus Z. Uh, it means as denoted by the uh, color is equal to the one. So normally we have the minimum uh, value of color is zero and maximum to one. So uh, CI chromatic diagram in this diagram as the figure shows that we have uh, three portions for this uh, image chromatic diagram. So we have also three axes, X axis, Y axis and Z axis that we uh, study in this. And uh, the point marked with the green, so in the, in the green part, we have X that is noted by red. Uh, red color is have the value of 25% and Y, which is which we set as the green, we have the 62%. And for the Z axis, we have only 13% that is denoted by the uh, yeah, blue value. The color model. So uh, we have different type of color models in our color image processing. The first uh, we have specified this uh, first one is the RGB model, red, green, blue, and second one is this SMY. Uh, also, we have the HSI model and amplitude specifications in which amplitude specifications 8 bits per color component or 24 bits per pixels it means we have to uh, transform an object according to this uh, these bits so the total number of the colors a uh, total of 16 million colors we have the true rgb color that requires the maximum 3 megabyte memory for each so this is our RGB color model. In, in there we have the uh, X axis, Y axis and Z, Z axis. So it means we have different coordinates and have some coordinate values. So as we show uh, there, there is in the black color, uh, it means sorry, uh, there's a black color is formed only when we have the 0, 0, 0 coordinate uh, at the at the origin point. So it forms a, a color black. If we add some of uh, some of the value until the white, then it we have a uh, uh, gray color. So if we add some coordinates, same coordinates uh, forward to the uh, origin point, then we will form uh, a white color. So, uh, according to this uh, color model, if if we want to get an uh, other color, we have to add some color values. So we will form a new color as we discussed before in the image. Uh, so first of all, if we add red and blue color uh, by adding some of the coordinate amounts uh, and putting some values of the colors, we will found a magenta color. And if we add the green and blue, we will uh, found the cyan color. And as the same procedure following, if we we will discuss about green and red. Uh, by adding some values to, to the both coordinates, we will have to get the yellow color. So uh, the conversion of CMY and CMYK color models. So according to the conversion, as I said before, that we have the maximum value one. So uh, uh, the minimum value is zero for the colors and the maximum is one. So for the CMY, we have the value one. We have to subtract the value of red, green and blue to uh, to form a new uh, conversion between these uh, models. So equal amount of cyan, magenta and yellow produces black. 
as i told you before uh, this produced muddy looking black so this is the color that that we really get about this to produce true black a fourth color black is added uh, it means we have cmy first of all if we I want a two black color, so we will have to add one uh, more coordinate or one more value uh, that is be black uh, for black color, and then we will form a CMYK model. That means uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black color model. So uh, at last we have this HSI color model it, that represents for the hue uh, saturation and intensity model. So first of all, what hue represents? It represents the domain color as perceived by an observer. So it is an attribute associated with the dominant wavelength. So saturation refers to the relative purity. The pure spectrum colors are fully saturated. So intensity, it may uh, first of all, it 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 is the means of the brightness. So uh, we can say the intensity reflects the brightness. This is the HSI color model. We have we are using the hexagon uh, transformation for this uh, by using uh, the same coordinates as uh, the same example shows. So uh, by adding some colors, we we are getting a new color. By adding some values, we are getting a new color by the same coordinates. Uh, but in the second uh, diagram, as you see in this one. Uh, the, satur the saturation angle for for the hue is drawn on the red axis to form uh, to, uh, to represent and to get the new color. So it, as the same in the second, we have to add, we have to uh, give a reference to the uh, yellow and red color to form uh, one more uh, color. And in the third one, we have the same angle but with different reference axis for the red, yellow, and finding a new color. So. Uh, this is about the HSA model, and what is about the conversion between these both? So first of all, converting if we want to convert from uh, red, green, blue to hue saturation and intensity. First of all, we are uh, using to do for the hue. So for the hue, uh, if we want to find theta, if we will check first of all, if we check if our blue color is less is less than equal to our green color, then we will be use theta. And uh, for the for the formula is shown in figure for theta, it is our cos inverse, uh, one by two red minus green plus red minus blue divided by this uh, some values for red minus uh, green square and this one uh, for also. If if we don't have uh, if our blue color is greater than our green color, then we will be used our 360 minus theta. We can subtract our uh, formula value from 360. And for the saturation part, we have this formula, but one minus uh, three divided by the all color values that we have for the minimum RGB. And for finding the intensity or brightness reflection, we will have one by three and the adding of the colors. So converting from uh, HSI to RGB. So for, uh, for in converting from HSI to RGB, we have three. We are making the three type of factors: RG sector, GB sector, and BR sector. And for the first sector, if our value of hue is lies in between 0 to 120, then we are using uh, these formulas for blue, red, and green. I intensity, I am uh, one minus S, and for R. And for green, we have some formulas for RG sector. If our value is lies between the hue value of zero until 20. And the second one, we have the GB sector. If our value of H is realized between uh, until between 120 to 240 degree, we are using the same formulas by, by changing the names for red, green, and blue by also subtracting in the green value, the hue from uh, the uh, taking value started. And for the BR sector, if our value realized between 240 to 360 every time it has a gap for 120 degrees so uh, we are doing this by by uh, subtracting the main value of a defined value that 240 120 uh, by uh, subtracting from our hue and divided by the cost uh, so we will find this value from these sectors by if we want to convert from hsi to rgb this is the comparison of different color spaces uh, fully color images like first of all we have cyan First, in the first uh, very top, we have the full color, color image. In second one, we have cyan, magenta, yellow, black, the red, green, blue, hue, saturation, and intensity. These are the different color schemes that we are used and apply on the on the first image that is full color. So this one we have uh, color image display and printing. Uh, 
Uh, display, we have three need light sources projecting the same uh, colors, red, green, blue components at every pixels. We have total pixels 0 to 255. Analog displays, we can erase the screen directly projecting at all uh, the pixel location for the digital display. And from the printing processes, we have uh, need, uh, color dyes, uh, the same CMY model or CMY if we want black color also, we will add the black color in it. So we have CMYK model. So analog printing, digital printing and out of gamut color or we can say the range of color. So color images we have as if for the input we have started from pixel 0 to 255 for the red signal we have if we are representing to uh, give the object and a screen on a monitor screen. So first of all I will have to red so we have a red gun it will uh, give access to uh, perform the Im uh, image color on the screen then we have the green signal and we have the blue signal but every time we are using the guns so it will uh, raster the image for us to show a, a perfect object by using the coloring schemes. For this is color color uh, smart. We also you we can also say the color mode as the color uh, ranges. So this is our image. First of all, in the very top for the green one, we have the color perceived by the human eye. That the human eye, uh, how the human eye is seeing the things. And the second one, we have the printed color, the CMYK model, by using the uh, pure black color. So uh, the third one, we have the color that can be displayed on the RGB monitor. The third one is the color that the object can be focused on by the uh, to display the RGB monitor. So each color models have different color ranges. So model has a larger uh, uh, range than similar. Right? So it means they can say that the RGB model, red green B, uh, model, has the larger range than the CMY model. Therefore, the some color that appears on screen may not be printable and replace on the color the CMY range. So these are some of the uh, gamma corrections and intensity voltage responses. So first of all, we have sample input to monitor that we will give any random image. So our graph of input becomes the same. We have uh, no change. And but if we want to see the output, the it, the graph I will go down and it is 2.5 and we will have an output uh, L is equal to V 2.5. But if we will, we will uh, use to correct this uh, 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 plotting so we will uh, use this if we first of all we have the sample monitor that is showing some object uh, and then we will give some input uh, corrected input for it then we will divide this same input uh, uh, that we have in the intensity voltage to for, for the correction of our gamma we will divide our same value by one so the monitor output will be the same Color quantization, uh, we can say that's like a set of color that are most frequently used in image. Save them in lookup table, also known as color map or color plate. So uh, for the colors that are mostly used, uh, mostly we have using the same three main colors. So we also use the color map. Uh, any color is contrast to one of the index colors. So this we have some indexes for the colors. Typically we have the values uh, selected by the 256 pixels out of the 16 millions. So uh, this is some plotting for the color quantization quantizations so we have uh, there are two uh, types for quantization first is first we can say that uniform and second is uh, adoptive uh, we, uh, in uniform we can also say to the scalar quantization and vector quantization for adaptive so quantize each if for example if you have 24 bit uh, so eight bits can be relied by using all the three bits of the same colors. So uh, let's just suppose we can say that uh, for uh, bit la eight eight levels for red, three bit levels for eight levels, and for green there is two bits for four levels for blue. Uh, so it, it will not it will no, not a good approach and it will not produce a good result. Uh, but if you will use and the vector quantization, uh, each colors have the 3D vector as one entity uh, that appears uh, most often on the given image. So we can replace the colors at every pixel closer to our uh, code book, what we are doing uh, on uh, to render the image to get the results by adding some adoptive uh, uh, things. So uh, it, it uh, for adoptive it will uh, varies from image to image as our code represents or code book represents so these are some illustrations for uniform and vector quantization we have two coordinates x and y and in the left side we have the co uh, uniform quantization that we have a very structured uh, but it is not good approach as we uh, uh, see but uh, for the vector quantization we have uh, this one for the example of uh, color image quantization, when we are converting our non-uniform quantization vector to a uniform, so it means we have, uh, first of all, we have the 24-bit image, so we are uh, doing it for the uniform. We are using the bits for uh, red, green, and blue uh, for 8, 8, and 4, 4 to make it uh, uh, equal for the quantization. 
So this is the given result. It will be um, uh, like uh, some of the different because it, the part, it, this picture is changing from 24 bits to uh, the quantization for uniform for the eight bits. These are some web colors, total web colors. We have two 16 save colors with uh, different uh, values to, that can be rendered constantly by different computer systems. They are obtained by quantizing the red, green, blue components independently. Uh, each component has six possible values uh, multiply by multiplying and getting the values. We have different uh, until 255. We can multiply everything from zero. So this is the color death ring. Color uh, quantization may cause control effect when the number of colors is not sufficient. If we have no sufficient color, that it will give uh, the contour effect on our image. Uh, randomly perturb the color values slightly to break up the contour effects. So we have three things here: uh, fixed pattern dithering, diffusion dithering, developed originally for rendering grayscale image using the black and white ink only. So original for the original value we have red, green, or blue, and after we get the dithered value, we, it will give some effect by adding the fixed pattern and diffusion and dithering. So in the in the middle we will found the dithering value. For the example of uh, dithering, we can see in it if we have an eight bit uniform without dithering. So we can see in the next image there is eight bit uniform with diffusing this thing. So it will give a good effect on uh, the image that is uniform with the string and it will be more uh, visible more than the without the string image. So that is our studio color image. Why we use studio color? That uh, we can say that human eye is more sensitive uh, to uh, sensitive to changes in the color hue than in brightness. So it means that uh, the human eye will be uh, see the color according to a, a good environment or good uh, like good color it will predict to perceive the image or object and how it will do this uh, it may use different colors different in hues different values of you to represent different image features in monochrome image to uh, raster or to see the object very clearly uh, we have intensity sliding, slicing and frequency sliding. Display different gray levels as different colors. It will be used to visualize the vegetation imagery. For example, if one is interested in features with a certain intensity range or several intensity ranges, and the second one is frequency slicing. So it will be occurs decomposing an image into the different frequency levels by using different components of uh, colors and by using different color values to uh, use this frequency slicing. This is uh, the chart for the intensity slicing. It, it will be realized between the range of Fi minus 1 to Fi that are rendered with the color Ci. In the first most one, we have the C1, C2 and up to C4. And for the uh, last one, we have gray level. So we have uh, F0 started from up to F4. So the pixel with the gray scale intensity is, is in the range between the Fi to rendered with the color Ci. This is an other example that is rendered from the NASA, uh, courtesy of NASA. So first of all, the image A, we can say that it's an image in which intensity corresponds to average monthly rainfall. And the second is represented by the uh, random the color assigned to intensity values. And the third one is the color coded images. And this fourth one is the zoom of the South America region. That is the courtesy, uh, courtesy of NASA. It will be taken from there and rendered. Pseudo color display of multiple images. Uh, display multiple sensors images a single color multi sensor images for example multiple uh, spectral images by satellites so there are some frequency domains so f1 f2 up to so on f fk we are using to transform it and by uh, for for the additional processing we will gain some values of uh, hue values of red green and blue so uh, this is for the uh, multiple images for example this is an image uh, in, uh, it is it's it can be a composite image obtained by treating A, B, and C at the red, green, blue components of an RGB image. Image obtained in the same manner, this is for the F image, but using in the red channel, the near infrared image is in D, original multiple image courtesy. So the D image is the original image courtesy of NASA that is taken, and the F image obtained in the same manner, but using the red channel, the near infrared image. So this is uh, uh, the, the, this example for the uh, pseudo color rendition of the Jupiter moon. And the second example is the close up that is taken by the service from the NASA to render the image more accurately that what, what is happening and what is the real structure for this. <clears throat> Color image enhancement. Enhance each primary color component independently using the techniques for monochrome images. Uh, it will convert, like, will change the colors from original 
to hue or convert the trace stimulus representation by using the same formula by subtracting CMY from one minus and uh, the all colors RGB and enhance the contrast of luminous components only. So we can use the HSI representation where I intensity is uh, as we saw that intensity the reflection of the brightness. So I truly reflect the luminous information. Examples for the color image enhancement. We have that uh, three images. Uh, three uh, this histogram charts. We can say that the first one is the flat and the second one is the corrected image. For different RGB values, if we have zero to maximum one, so we have different as we have a graph. We can if we can play with them, uh, we will find the different colors present on it by using the hue values, by using uh, saturation values, and by using the uh, uh, intensity value, it means uh, brightness value. The second one is the same and the third one is the same. There are some values and the second one are the correct images that is obtained by the HSI uh, using the, um, the uh, uh, adding the values in the coordinates of all three colors. Example of color image enhancement. In this image, we have corrections for uh, say on magenta yellow and black color module color images. So we will try to do uh, uh, in, in these images, we can see that our first one is original and corrected. And after that, we, we will do uh, some of the, the values adding on our uh, sections on the histogram charts to uh, take the, some uh, more colors to represent our image. So we will apply all our CM by K model here to produce and get the new color for the image. So uh, this is same. Uh, another example followed by the saturation adjustment in the HSI color space. So we, we, this is one image, so we will try it on uh, different three levels for hue, saturation and intensity to check to get the more results and get the new colors. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Zulfagar, for your informative presentation. It was complete and very well yeah, organized you, and nice. OK, guys. Thank you, sir. Now. Thank you so much. For the uh, grading, uh, so Paul, can you uh, stop sharing your screen? Yeah, of course. Of course. And let me also let me also. Yes. Uh, 